Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing wands. Wands are an essential part of any witch or wizard's arsenal, an object with which they are able to channel and hone their magical abilities. When witches and wizards come of age, and the time finally comes for them to head off to Hogwarts, one of the first places they go in preparation for the school year is Ollivander's. It's at Ollivander's, makers have fine wands since 382 BC, that many witches and wizards are paired with the wand that they will keep for their entire life, the wand that they form a real connection with. As wands are quasi-sentient, they possess the ability to choose the wizard, rather than the other way around, which is why wands are a very personal item. We know Harry's wand and a few others are mentioned, but what about all of the other characters? In today's video, I want to break down the wands of 20 Harry Potter characters and explain what these wands mean. Without further ado, let's get started. Hermione Granger Hermione Granger's wand is made of vinewood, a less common type of wandwood that tends to generally suit witches and wizards who seek a greater purpose. Vine is also drawn to personalities with hidden depths. The core of her wand is Dragonheart String, one of the most powerful, but temperamental, wand core materials derived from dragons. The length of her wand is 10 and 3 quarter inches, which is pretty much normal. Voldemort Though Voldemort eventually procures the Elder Wand, at one point he was appointed a wand at Ollivander's just like everyone else. His first wand was made of yew, 13 and a half inches in length and with a phoenix feather core. This wand is arguably one of the most infamous, destructive wands in the entire Harry Potter universe and was responsible for the famous scar on Harry's forehead. Yew is a rarer wand type which tends to be drawn to more unusual people. It also retains a fierce reputation in the spheres of dueling. Gilderoy Lockhart Gilderoy Lockhart's wand was 9 inches long and made of cherry wood, with a dragonheart string core. The short length of Lockhart's wand is representative of the fact that his personality is lacking in some ways. Cherry wood is common for students at Mahutu Koro, the magical school in Japan, and creates a wand of strange power. Ron Weasley Ron Weasley had two wands over the course of the story. The first was a hand-me-down, which was 12 inches and made of ash, with a unicorn hair core. His second wand was 14 inches long, made of willow, and also had a unicorn hair core. The great length of his wand is representative of his larger-than-life personality, and the willow wood used is an uncommon wood type which is purported to possess healing power. Willow wands have consistently selected those of greatest potential, rather than those who feel they have little to learn. Neville Longbottom Neville Longbottom had two wands, the first was a hand-me-down, and little is known about it. His second wand, however, was 13 inches long and made of cherry wood, with a unicorn hair core. Like Ron, the length of his wand is representative of his strength of character. Unicorn hair cores generally produce the most consistent magic, and are the most faithful of all wands. Bellatrix Lestrange Bellatrix Lestrange's wand was 12 and 3 quarter inches long and made of walnut, with a dragon heart string core. Though evil, the length of Bellatrix's wand in conjunction with her small stature would suggest that she has a strong character. Walnut wands are often found in the hands of magical inventors, and are particularly versatile. Bellatrix's wand was often described as unyielding. Draco Malfoy Draco Malfoy's wand was 10 inches long and made of hawthorn, with a unicorn hair core. Draco's wand was once described by Ollivander as reasonably springy. Hawthorn wands are often paired with witches and wizards that have a conflicted nature, and for this reason, the hawthorn fits Draco perfectly. Minerva McGonagall Minerva McGonagall's wand was 9.5 inches long and made of fur with a dragon heart string core. What stuck out to me about her wand is the length, as it is quite short as far as wands go. Sometimes, but not always, indicating a lack of strength of character, like with Lockhart. However, in McGonagall's case, the short length of her wand may solely be due to her small physical stature. Fur wands are particularly suited to transfiguration, her specialty. Quirinus Quirrell Quirinus Quirrell's wand was 9 inches long and made of alder, with a unicorn hair core. Quirrell's extremely short wand is undoubtedly the result of his narrow personality and feeble nature. Alder wood wands generally seek witches and wizards that represent characteristics considered to be the opposite of what the wood itself represents. Hagrid The story of Hagrid's wand is lengthy, and I know that he later uses the umbrella, but once upon a time, Hagrid's wand was fully intact. Hagrid's wand was 16 inches long, made of oak with an unknown core. Oak wands are said to have an affinity with magic of the natural world, and expertly suit witches and wizards that work with creatures and plants. 
The length of Hagrid's wand is representative of his giant stature and larger-than-life personality. Sir Cadogan. Sir Cadogan's wand was nine inches long and made of blackthorn, with a troll whisker core. Blackthorn wands are best suited to warriors, and can be found in the possession of many prodigious witches and wizards. Troll whisker cores, on the other hand, are considered to be barely passable wand core materials. Horace Slughorn. Horace Slughorn's wand was ten and a quarter inches long and made of cedar with a dragon heart string core. Cedar wands are drawn to those with an incredible strength of character and propensity for immense loyalty. Peter Pettigrew. Peter Pettigrew's wand was nine and a quarter inches long and made of chestnut with a dragon heart string core. His short one length is, in my eyes, certainly representative of his mental weakness and stunted character. Chestnut wands are pretty versatile, but are often drawn to witches and wizards that are gifted tamers of magical beasts. However, this can change greatly depending on the core with which it is paired. Remus Lupin Remus Lupin's wand was ten and a quarter inches long and made of cypress with a unicorn hair core. The great medieval wand maker, Geraint Ollivander, wrote that he was always honoured to match a cypress wand, for he knew he was meeting a witch or wizard who would die a heroic death. Couldn't be more fitting. Lucius Malfoy Lucius Malfoy's wand was 18 inches long and made of elm, with a dragon heart string core. I should mention that the length of Lucius's wand can be attributed to the addition of a silver snakehead handle. I'm not sure how long the actual wand is. Elm wands are very sophisticated ones which are capable of highly advanced magic in the right hands. Fleur de la Cour Fleur de la Cour's wand was nine and a half inches long and made of rosewood with a vila hair core. Rosewood is a very rare wonderwood, representing love and purity, that is not used by Ollivander. Vila hair cores, which come from Vila, like Fleur, are said to be highly temperamental. Celestina Warbeck Celestina Warbeck's wand was ten and a half inches long, made of larch with a phoenix feather core. Larchwood wands are said to be incredibly attractive and powerful, but also very hard to please. Victor Crumb Victor Crumb's wand was ten and a quarter inches long and made of hornbeam with a dragon heart string core. Hornbeam wands are known for being expertly matched with a witch or wizard's style of magic and become extremely personalized very quickly, making them nearly impossible to use in the hands of anyone else. Ollivander The wand maker himself, Garrick Ollivander, had a twelve and three quarter inch wand made of hornbeam with a dragon heart string core. He had this to say of his own wand. My own wand is made of hornbeam, and so it is with all due modesty that I state that hornbeam selects for its life mate the talented witch or wizard with a single pure passion, which some might call obsession. Sybil Trelawney Sybil Trelawney had a nine and a half inch wand made of hazel with a unicorn hair core. Hazel wands are said to work best for those who are able to master the art of understanding and managing their own feelings. Not sure this was the best pairing. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something about the ones of some of your favourite characters. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, the wand chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter.